Proto-Sinaitic, also referred to as Sinaitic, Proto-Canaanite, Old Canaanite, or Canaanite, is a term for both a Middle Bronze Age Middle Kingdom script attested in a small corpus of inscriptions found at Surat el qadim in the Sinai Peninsula, Egypt, and the reconstructed common ancestor of the Paleo-Hebrew, Phoenician and South Arabian scripts and, by extension, of most historical and modern alphabets. The earliest, Proto-Sinaitic, Inscriptions are mostly dated to between the mid-19th and the mid-16th century BC. The principal debate is between an early date, around 1850 BC, and a late date, around 1550 BC. The choice of one or the other date decides whether it is Proto-Sinaitic or Proto-Canaanite, and by extension locates the invention of the alphabet in Egypt or Canaan respectively. The evolution of Proto-Sinaitic, and the various Proto-Canaanite scripts during the Bronze Age is based on rather scant epigraphic evidence. It is only with the Bronze Age collapse and the rise of new Semitic kingdoms in the Levant that Proto-Canaanite is clearly attested. Byblos inscriptions, 10th-8th century BC, Kerbet Kayafa inscription c. 10th century BC, the so-called Proto-Sinaitic inscriptions were discovered in the winter of 1904–1905 in Sinai by Hilda and Flinders Petrie. To this may be added a number of short, proto-Canaanite, inscriptions found in Canaan and dated to between the 17th and 15th centuries BC, and more recently, the discovery in 1999 of the so-called, Wadi el Hol inscriptions, found in Middle Egypt by John and Deborah Darnell. The Wadi el Hol inscriptions strongly suggest a date of development of Proto Sinaitic writing from the mid 19th to 18th centuries BC. Epigraphy Surat inscriptions The Sinai inscriptions are best known from carved graffiti and votive texts from a mountain in the Sinai called Surat el Qadim and its temple to the Egyptian goddess Hathor. The mountain contained turquoise mines which were visited by repeated expeditions over 800 years. Many of the workers and officials were from the Nile Delta, and included large numbers of Canaanites i.e. speakers of an early form of Northwest Semitic ancestral to the Canaanite languages of the Late Bronze Age who had been allowed to settle the Eastern Delta. Most of the forty or so inscriptions have been found among much more numerous hieratic and hieroglyphic inscriptions, scratched on rocks near and in the turquoise mines and along the roads leading to the temple. The date of the inscriptions is mostly placed in the 17th or 16th century BC. Four inscriptions have been found in the temple, on two small human statues and on either side of a small stone sphinx. They are crudely done, suggesting that the workers who made them were illiterate apart from this script. In 1916, Alan Gardiner, using sound values derived from the alphabet hypothesis, translated a collection of signs as limb lblt to the lady. inscriptions. Only a few inscriptions have been found in Canaan itself, dated to between the 17th and 15th centuries BC. They are all very short, most consisting of only a couple of letters, and may have been written by Canaanite caravanners or soldiers from Egypt. They sometimes go by the name Proto-Canaanite, although the term Proto-Canaanite is also applied to early Phoenician or Hebrew inscriptions, respectively. Wadi el Hol inscriptions The Wadi el Hol inscriptions Arabic, Wadi el Hul Wadi al Hol Ravine of Terror were carved on the stone sides of an ancient high desert military and trade road linking Thebes and Abydos, in the heart of literate Egypt. They are in a wadi in the Cana bend of the Nile, at approximately 25 degrees 57 and 32 degrees 25 e, among dozens of hieratic and hieroglyphic inscriptions. The inscriptions are graphically very similar to the Surat inscriptions, but show a greater hieroglyphic influence, such as a glyph for a man that was apparently not read alphabetically. The first of these H1 is a figure of celebration Gardiner A28, whereas the second H2 is either that of a child Gardiner A17 or of dancing Gardiner A32. 
If the latter, H1 and H2 may be graphic variants such as two hieroglyphs both used to write the Canaanite word Hillel, jubilation, rather than different consonants. Some scholars Darnell et al. think that the RBRB at the beginning of inscription 1 is likely Rebbe chief, cognate with Rabbi, and that the LL at the end of inscription 2 is likely L. A. God. Brian Collis has published a translation of the text, in which some of the signs are treated as logograms representing a whole word, not just a single consonant or rebuses Antiguo Oriente 8 91 V excellent R banquet missed of the celebration H Ilal of a knot N T L L will provide Wigs H plenty R B of wine W N and vittles Minnesota for the celebration H Ilal we will sacrifice N G T to her H an ox and P A prime R fatling M X this interpretation fits into the pattern in some of the surrounding Egyptian inscriptions, with celebrations for the goddess Hathor involving inebriation. Proto-Canaanite Proto-Canaanite, also referred to as Proto-Canaan, Old Canaanite, or Canaanite, is the name given to the Proto-Sinaitic script c. 16th century BC, when found in Canaan. The term Proto-Canaanite is also used when referring to the ancestor of the Phoenician or Paleo-Hebrew script, respectively, before some cut-off date, typically 1050 BC, with an undefined affinity to Proto-Sinaitic. While no extant inscription in the Phoenician alphabet is older than c. 1050 BC. Proto-Canaanite is a term used for the early alphabets as used during the 13th and 12th centuries BC in Phoenicia. However, the Phoenician, Hebrew, and other Canaanite dialects were largely indistinguishable before the 11th century BC. A possible example of Proto-Canaanite was found in 2012, the Afel inscription, when during the excavations of the south wall of the Temple Mount by the Israeli archaeologist Eilat Mazar in Jerusalem on a storage jar made of pottery. Inscribed on the pot are some big letters about an inch high of which only five are complete and traces of perhaps three additional letters written in Proto-Canaanite script. History Attempts have repeatedly been made to derive the letters from ancient Egyptian hieroglyphics, but with limited success. In the 19th century there were scholars who subscribed to the theory of the Egyptian origin, while other theories held that the Phoenician script developed from the Akkadian cuneiform, Cretan linear, Cypriot syllabic, and Hittite hieroglyphic scripts. The Proto-Sinaitic inscriptions were studied by Alan Gardiner who, based on a short bilingual inscription on a stone sphinx, identified the inscriptions as Semitic, reading MHBL as the beloved of the lady, MHB, beloved with the second B and the final T of BLT, lady, missing. William Albright in the 1950s and 1960s published interpretations of Proto-Sinaitic as the key to show the derivation of the Canaanite alphabet from Hieratic, leading to the commonly accepted belief that the language of the inscriptions was Semitic and that the script had a Hieratic prototype. The Proto-Sinaitic inscriptions, along with the contemporary parallels found in Canaan and Wadi el Hol, are thus hypothesized to show an intermediate step between Egyptian hieratic script and the Phoenician alphabet. Brian Collis 2014 notes that 18 of the 22 letters of the Phoenician alphabet have counterparts in the Byblos syllabary, and it seems that the proto-alphabet evolved as a simplification of the syllabary, moving from syllabic to consonantal writing, in the style of the Egyptian script which did not normally indicate vowels. This goes against the Goldwasser hypothesis 2010 that the original alphabet was invented by ignorant miners in Sinai. According to the alphabet theory, the early Semitic proto-alphabet reflected in the proto-Sinaitic inscriptions would have given rise to both the South Arabian script and the proto-Canaanite script by the time of the Bronze Age collapse 1200 to 1150 BCE. The theory centers on Albright's hypothesis that only the graphic form of the proto-Sinaitic characters derive from Egyptian hieroglyphs, and that they were given the sound value of the first consonant of the Semitic translation of the hieroglyph many hieroglyphs had already been used acrophonically in Egyptian. For example, the hieroglyph for PR, house, a rectangle partially open along one side, O1, in Gardiner's sign list, was adopted to write Semitic, B, after the first consonant of Beitu, the Semitic word for house. 
According to the alphabet hypothesis, the shapes of the letters would have evolved from proto synatic forms into Phoenician forms, but most of the names of the letters would have remained the same. Synopsis Below is a table synoptically showing selected proto synatic signs and the proposed correspondences with Phoenician letters. Also shown are the sound values, names, and descendants of the Phoenician letters. The other section shows the corresponding Archaic Greek, Modern Greek, Etruscan, and Latin letters. See also Abjad Byblos syllabary Ancient Hebrew writings Ugaritic script